Hello, welcome to the next instalment of our Sprinter van conversion. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the electrics. Before we insulate the van, we want to pull all the cables in to all the various bits of equipment. So the first thing we need to do is decide what we're actually going to put in there and what needs power, whether it needs 12 volt power, whether it needs 230 volt power. So where we need to start is with a schematic. This is the very first schematic diagram that I drew when I was initially thinking about doing this van conversion. It doesn't show every appliance that I'm going to put into the van, but it does cover the main aspects. So let me just talk you through it quickly. We plan to have solar panels fitted on the roof of the van so that we can be totally off grid. So most of the time we don't have to rely on being hooked up on a caravan site. So we'll have solar panels on the roof. You can't use the power off of these directly. They have to then charge some leisure batteries which will be installed in the van. And we'll have a solar charge controller which will be metering the supply from the panels and charging the batteries. Then off of these batteries we can then run 12 volts DC to a little blade fuse holder. This will have all the fuses in for our outgoing 12 volt circuits. And then most of the equipment that's in the van will run off a 12 volt DC. So all of the lights, the control circuit for the fridge, USB sockets for charging laptops and mobile phones, they'll all run off of 12 volts, as will the water pump and controls for the heater, etc. Off of the 12 volt DC side, I'll also have a little voltmeter and that will tell me what the condition of the batteries is. Then to run 240 volt appliances, like laptops and so forth, I'll come off of the batteries, fire a fuse through an inverter. And then what that'll do is that'll change the 12 volt DC and it'll ramp it up to 230 volt AC, which will then, I can plug normal three pin appliances into that. So I'll have a number of sockets in the van, which will be connected to the inverter and that'll give me standard 230 volt that's all of the off-grid side of the van. And then when we're on campsites, you do have the facility to plug into their shore power or hookup. So I'll have a socket on the side of the van, which will take an extension lead off of the caravan site's power supply. And that'll give me 230 volts AC directly into the van. I'll have a little RCD unit, which is like a small consumer unit, a slimmed down version of what you'd have in your house. And this will then feed all of the 230 volt appliances, whether that be a fridge or my laptop or just sockets where I can plug in anything I like. Now there's two separate systems here. I've got a mains voltage system and I've got a 12 volt DC system. And this can get you know, very confusing. There can be a lot of wiring. I've potentially got to run two separate sets of wires out to two separate sets of sockets. Um, I don't really want to have to do that. So I want to come up with a way that I can combine all of this into one simple panel and then a common point where I can select whether I want to use shore power or whether I want to use inverter power from the solar panels and be off grid. When I was designing my electric system for the Sprinter, I wanted all the wiring to come back to a central location and all of my fuses and trips and all of the battery indication to be in one point. So what I've done is I've built this control panel. It's basically a distribution board. It's very similar to what you'll probably find in an American RV, but this one we've made ourselves. So what I've got on one side is I've got the 12 volt DC trips, and on the other side here, I've got the 230 volt mains trips. So I've got an RCD protector and individual MCBs. I've also got two incoming supplies. One supply will be via the solar panels and the inverter, giving me mains voltage, and the other supply will be when we're on a hookup, say on a campsite. And what I've done with this double pole changeover switch here is I've got the facility to switch from one supply to the other. So I can simply choose to be on the hookup supply or I can choose to be on the supply via the solar panels. And then everything out of this panel in the van will then be supplied by one of these two sources. When designing this distribution panel, the first thing I do, again, is draw 
a simple single line wiring diagram. It just gets everything clear in your mind as to what's got to be wired where and it just helps you plan the interior of the control panel. So let's just have a quick look at this wiring diagram. What we see here is the 12 volt DC circuits and this is the internal wiring of our new distribution board. These terminals at the bottom of the board are the incoming supplies. So here you can see we'll have a 12 volt DC supply from the battery coming in via 12 volt DC trip. This positive feed will then feed the blade fuse holder and then these are all the outgoing 12 volt positive supplies to all our appliances in the van. So each appliance has got a separate blade fuse. Also off of this 12 volt battery supply I've got an outgoing feed via another DC trip which is the 12 volt feed onto the inverter. All of the negatives are commoned within the panel. The feeds going out to all my appliances, the negative wire will all be linked on this buzz bar. And in addition to that, I've just picked up a positive and a negative via a small control fuse and a momentary switch just to give me a voltage reading and that will tell me the condition of the leisure batteries. Here we have the 230 volt side of the distribution board and on these incoming terminals are the two mains inputs. One is from the hookup when we're plugged in on the caravan site, the other is the mains output of the inverter. So the supplies coming in here are both 230 volts. We've got two live cables, two neutrals and then what I've got is I've got a changeover switch and all that is it's a double pole double throw switch so it isolates both the live and the neutral. In the centre position everything is off. When you switch to the one position it turns on to the inverter live and the inverter neutral. When you flick over to the two position you're on the hookup live and the hookup neutral. So there's a clear break there between both supplies. But what that does then, everything on the output side of that switch is only fed off of one of those two supplies at any one time. So then here we've got the outgoing trips to all of my 230 volt appliances within the van. Each appliance has got its own trip and then I've commoned up all the neutrals coming back to a main RCD. So the main RCD will protect everything and then each appliance has got its own individual trip. I've gone for trips instead of fuses because I just think they're a lot easier if I have a fuse that's blown and I'm in a remote location I can't get a replacement I'm not going to be able to use that appliance but with a trip I can simply reset it once I've identified that there's no problem. Let me show you each component in its place within the distribution board. On the front of the distribution board let's just go through the items that we've got here. I've got a voltage indicator with a momentary push button so you push this button, hold it in, and it will display the battery voltage at the top here. We've got the DC trips for the 12 volt DC side, which is the supply from the batteries. And we've also got the mains trips, the main RCD, and all of the outgoing mains voltage trips. And then lastly at the bottom here, I've got a couple of LED indicators just to tell me that I've got power actually coming onto the board. So this will be the supply from the mains hookup if we're on a caravan site and this is the supply from the inverter. When these LEDs are lit that tells me that I've actually got power voltage coming onto the board. And then in the middle here we've got a centre off double pole changeover switch. And what this does is this takes the two feeds that are coming into the panel and then switches which one is active and puts that onto the outgoing trips. So I can choose if I want to be on the mains hookup supply going out to all the sockets and heaters or if I want to be on the solar panel inverter supply coming in and then that's powering all of the sockets and heaters. So it's an easy simple way where I only need one lot of wiring in the van to all the appliances and all the sockets 
and I can just with a flick of a switch decide which source I want to power all those devices. Let's open up the panel, have a look inside. Okay, so here we have the panel open. I know it looks very daunting to begin with, but I'll try and explain to you in simple terms how all of this is going to work. On the back of the door here, we can see here is the momentary push button. This is the back of the little liquid crystal display. This is the back of the DC trips, which is going to have the 12 volt DC power. This is the back of the two neon lights, the two green lights on the front of the panel. And this is the back of the double pole changeover switch. So what would happen on the 12 volt side is we'll take power from our batteries, we'll come in here, it will come into these two terminals. It will then be routed across to the DC trip, which will protect that circuit. It will then come back into the panel and onto our little blade fuse carrier. And then these are the outgoing circuits for the 12 volt appliances. Each of these circuits is then in turn wired to this outgoing terminal strip. And these are all numbered corresponding to the wiring diagram. So all of my 12 volt circuits are gonna come out the top of the panel. All the positive feeds are gonna come out of this terminal strip and I'll wire all the negatives to this negative bar. So that's all the 12 volt side. That'll all come out the top of the panel. Then we've got the mains voltage side. I've got two inputs here, one from the mains hookup, which will come into these terminals, and one from the inverter, which will come into these terminals. This mains power comes round this cable here and onto the changeover switch. And depending which way that switch is selected, it then puts power back onto this bank of trips. So you've got the main RCD trip, which basically protects the whole of that circuit. And then we've got individual trips to protect each device. And then the live from those trips is wired down the back here and into these outgoing terminals here. So I've got the live terminals coming out here and I've got a common neutral set of terminals here. So all of the 230 volt power is going to come out the bottom of the panel. So I've kind of separated a little bit the 12 volt in the top and all the mains voltage stuff will come out the bottom of the panel. I've just tried to keep it as neat as possible. And then obviously each of these outgoing DC circuits can have a different size fuse in it. And these blade fuses will simply be sized depending on what load I have connected to these outgoing terminals. Let's put some power onto these input terminals here and we can see some of these devices working on the bench. Okay, so what I've done here now is I've temporarily wired a mains voltage via this switch into the mains input on these terminals. I have to be very careful now because this board will be live. So this simulates my shore feed or hookup when I'm at a caravan site. And these two terminals here, these two cables rather, into these terminals are simulating the 12 volt DC supply from my batteries. And what I've done is I've just got my bench power supply unit giving me a 12 volt feed out of these cables just to simulate the 12 volt DC power supply from the battery just so we can see it working. So on the front of the panel, if I now turn on the hookup supply, as if I'd plugged into the mains on the caravan site and flicked that on, we'll see that the LED light comes on to tell me that I've actually got power coming in on this hookup cable coming into here. And then if I flick this changeover switch to the one position, all of my outgoing circuits on the 230 volt will be powered up and all those trips will be live. All my circuits going out of the bottom of the panel will also be live. This light will stay illuminated all the time that there is shore power coming into the panel. And exactly the same would happen on the inverter side. If I had power coming from the inverter into this panel, this green light would be live and illuminated. While we've got the door shut, 
I've got 12 volt DC coming from my bench power supply unit into the inputs, which will be the battery inputs. And then what we can do with the push of a button, hopefully you can see this, I'll zoom in in a minute. It will give me a reading 12.5 volts, which is indicating the battery supply voltage. As soon as you let go of the button, the display drops out. I've done it with a push button because I didn't want that to be permanently lit. That would be a constant drain on the battery, all very, very minimal. But with a momentary push, I can push that, read the display, let go and it disappears. Let's just zoom in on the meter. I'll change the voltage on the bench supply and we'll just check that that is actually working. Okay, we can see there that that's saying 12.5 volts. Now if I turn the voltage down on the bench supply unit and then press the momentary button again we can now see that it's only reading 7.4 volts so obviously our battery would be in serious trouble if it was reading that for real but at least that demonstrates that that voltage meter is reading correctly. Now that I've got this changeover panel and distribution board the beauty of this system is I only need one set of mains cables coming out of this panel and I only need one set of sockets throughout my van. I'm planning to use these normal domestic sockets to plug in my appliances so my laptop, um, chargers and everything else I can just use as normal. These have got USB charging ports on them as well. So now I just need to run one set of cables through the van to these sockets. And then whether I'm on mains hook up at a caravan site or whether I'm running off of my solar panels through my charge controller and via my batteries and inverter, by a flick of a switch, I can change the source of power for these sockets throughout the whole van. In terms of cable that we're going to be pulling into the van, I've gone for two specific types. What you see here is what's called an Arctic Blue cable. And this is what I'm going to use for the mains voltage to feed all of the sockets and the mains voltage to feed the fridge and the heaters. This is a 2.5 millimeter three core flex, but it's specially rated for a much wider temperature range. So I believe it will go down to minus 40. It's not going to be as cold as that where we're going in the van, but this is much more suitable for outdoor use. It's typically used on boats and caravans and this is what we're going to be using in our sprinter conversion. On the 12 volt DC side I've gone for a very similar cable and I'll put the specifications of both cables in the description below and again this is a very much more robust cable, thicker insulation, far more suited for outdoor use and this is what we're going to be wiring all of our 12 volt DC supplies in. So these are the two cables, I've got 50 meters of each and we're going to be pulling these into the van, pulling them all back to the control panel and out to all of the various appliances. So that's the next job that we've got to get done. I want to make sure I've got all of the cables pulled in where they need to be and a little coil left there ready to be terminated before I start putting any insulation in. So in the next video we're going to be inside the van and we're going to be pulling these two cables into the various locations and back to the control panel. I know this panel build probably seems a little bit daunting to some of you who haven't any experience of electrics and I hope that I've been able to explain how it's going to work in some simple terms even if you don't understand the intricacies of the internal workings of the panel but I'd always advise you to seek help from a professional with your electrics if you're unsure. You can always leave me a comment below, ask any questions you like on any aspect of the build or anything to do with the electrics and the panel and I'll try and come back to you and answer your questions as quickly as I can. Please make sure that you subscribe. Next week we're going to be pulling all the cable into the van. Hope you'll join me for that video. Please give me a thumbs up. Do share the video if you found it interesting. Look forward to seeing you next time. Cheers.